always loosen your lug nuts while the wheel is still on the ground so that it's easy to remove them when it's off. So now we have the wheel removed. Looking at the brake line uh, clip here, and this could be a royal pain, um, but again, it's just stuck in, it's just a piece of sheet metal. Take a flathead screwdriver, like this, and there's actually a center little slot for it to fit in like that. And then you could jack the screwdriver against something, please don't react it against the brake line, but prying at it until it actually comes out. See a little bit of an opening in the bottom. Like so. Like remove the brake cable itself, go down where there's a slot, get this and pass the center slot, and then pass the top flat. So I'm going to kind of screw there. We got the middle slat, and then screw some more, kind of twist, and then you should be able to fit the brake cable through. You need to twist, otherwise you'll kind of be stuck. Now that the brake cable's out of the way, it'll be a lot easier to torque this without banging into the brake cable. For a better wrench arc, we actually have an extender on the breaker bar. Bolt's pretty tight and rusted in, so it does take a little while to get this off. The two foot breaker bar, you give it enough turns, um, just be patient. You can now get like a little six inch ratchet on there and just keep going. Now it's just about out, finally. It takes a little while, but... There we have it, here's the pinch bolt. So now that's off, we're gonna rotate the knuckle around and take off the sway bar end link. This is the sway bar end link down here. You get elastomeric bushing down there and then the end link comes up. Another elastomeric bushing at the top and that's connected to the strut tower using an Allen anti-rotated 14 millimeter socket. Behind the strut tower flange there's a small link that you could grip on with vice grips if it's really rusted. If your Allen isn't on a socket, which is what the best way to do this, and which is what I recommend, get just a socketable Allen. You could also do this trick, which is to have an adjustable hold. This guy out, nuts off, and then so now you could take your ABS line off and kind of hang. Um, just a sec, don't stress the ABS line. But depending on the position of the strut tower, you could just slide the link right on out. Now you may have to steer the wheel a little bit to get the link perfectly aligned with the hole in the flange. If it's still really stuck after you turn the wheel, then you could just jack the entire knuckle up a bit to align the two holes. And then it should slide out nice and easily. So we were able to get this work by steering completely to the right. Sway bar and link comes out and comes out of the way. The bushing you can inspect now is actually in really good shape. Moves around without an issue. It's not torn. So oh, no need to replace the sway bar end link. Now for your ABS clip, uh, I recommend getting this off so you don't whack it when you're hammering off the strut itself. But you just push down on this tab right here and pull, pull really gently off. You don't want to break these. Cause... There, and that's removed. And then we can put this over here so that there's no tension on that part of the system. First few taps here, we will be doing a little metal to metal with the eight pound sled. Um, just being careful to just hit one of those ribs of the knuckle. Once we're done with that, we'll slide our 2x4 in there. It's a little bit longer once the 2x4 is in, but that's what we'll use for the remainder of the job. The is now off the strut tower. So the next step that we will do is to loosen uh, the three bolts at the top. These are 14 millimeters, so we'll undo those and we'll be able to lower the old struts out. Yep. On the left is the original Mazda 3 uh, left side front strut. And on the right is a Monroe preloaded OE Spectrum strut. Um, it's the 72264. And indeed, uh, all the parts are correct, except the dust boot's a little bit different. To install in the same way that we disassembled. So we have our new strut, and we're gonna just lower it in, into the well, uh, like before. Bring it up, and then position the uh, strut tower 
uh, back uh, roughly into the knuckle and adjust as needed so that the knuckle fits. And then at the same time, uh, we'll align it on the top. So we have our pinch bolt here. This is again a 17 millimeter bolt. Uh, that, um, and this is in relatively good condition. We'll clean it up and we'll put Loctite blue on it. Um, and then uh, we actually, for our Monroe struts, needed to do a little bit of sanding to get a good, in, uh, good loose fit between the knuckle um, and the struts. That's why you can see all the sand marks. Uh, you gotta be very careful not do any work to the strut itself. Um, but to fit it in the pinch, uh, we sanded the rustiness out of the pinch uh, part of the knuckle and um, on the outer diameter of the strut itself. We had our trolley jack right on our lower link bushing. You can see that our trolley jack is under there and we slowly jacked that while giving the strut a few taps. You can see the bottom of the strut has come through the knuckle in this image. Um, and so we had been just given, given the knuckle itself a few taps with a little uh, metal mallet uh, while jacking this up. And now we're in a position where the pinch bolt will fit straight through. Um, one thing is to check the alignment uh, of the tailpiece. The open part of the tailpiece uh, where my finger is needs to go completely through this hole in order to give you um, clearance to put the bolt in. Pointed heavy duty socket, not a 12 pointed socket on this pinch bolt. Um, and we're gonna tighten this guy to uh, um, about hand tight. I leave all the specs in the comments so we'll torque it to spec after we tighten it.